हरि ओम ओम सहना सहनौ सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तुमाषा ओ शा 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 समस्त जनकल्याणे निरत करुणय नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विवर ओ चिन्मय सद्गुरव नम योगेन चित्तस्यपदेन वाचा मल शरीर से वैद्यक योपाकोत्तम प्रवर मुनीना पातंजलिप्राजलीना हरि ओम we are in the concluding session of vibhuti pada the third pada of patanjali yoga sutra so far after studying the different types of vibhuti or the siddhis as we call it it is clear to us that the world that we see is com completely absurd and different than the world seen by a yogi we are hopelessly restricted to the stool aspect of the manifested universe for us whatever is nama roopatmak seen by the stool indriyas the gross perception is a limitation of our intellect to know about the things the things do exist in our mind to the extent our mind is able to perceive it if the mind is unable to perceive the sukshmata of anything that does not mean that there is no sukshmata in a thing our inability to use our buddhi to the utmost does not mean that the universe is restricted to the world view that we have and on the top of it not only that we consider the world view of ours as the final we think that as eternal and we do all transaction or vyavahar in this world although the world is a completely different phenomena than what it appears a yogi classifies the world simply into three things the objects of perception are called pancha mahabhutas or bhutas the instrument of perception called indriyas and the one who perceives the objects through the instruments called perceiver grahitru so for a yogi the whole world is seen as interaction between grahitru perceiver grahya the object and the process of grahana through indriya that's all it is in this world the existence of the world is there as long as there is a mind there is an instrument of perception and there is an object to be perceived can there be a situation when the objects are completely absent there can't be can there be a situation when the indriyas are absent 
there can't be and if these two are not absent there can be a condition where there is a perceiver who cannot be absent a perceiver is present and the objects are absent can't happen a perceiver is present the objects are present but the instrument of perception is not there can't happen but the objects are there the instruments are there but the perceiver is absent can happen the path of a yogi is to ultimately remove the perceiver from the act of the perception to remove the grahitru from the act of grahana to remove the dhyatru from the act of dhyanam and how does he do that it's a very systematic and absolute practical darshana amongst all the six darshanas <clears throat> the first step to remove the perceiver from the perception is to know the object very well so the first emphasis is on the study of object or bhuta so the first step being intricate and in detail penetrating study of the objects or the bhutas the yogi undertakes the act of what is called as bhuta jaya bhuta jaya is nothing else but dissecting and through the sanyama dhyana dharana samadhi together taking any object in the world there is no restriction on the object it could be any object because all objects are having same evolution they may look different to us a lady and a man is a differentiation for us because we are in the stool of vishwa in the sukshma vishwa this is all nothing else but bhuta sanghat our prayer in the morning aham na cha bhuta sanghatah given by shankara acharya itself means that the objects are assemblage of something sanghat how do we know because i see it as a complete object i see it as a complete stone i don't see it as a bhuta sanghat and that is where it requires what is called as sanyama or a dharana dhyana and samadhi on the object of your choice it could be a shaligrama it could be a nandi it could be a shankara any object that doesn't matter once the bhutas are being dissected the yogi realizes the inner nature of bhuta and he realizes that the bhutas the pancha maha bhutas that i see around me are nothing else but the cascading of five different stages a bhuta has a sthula swarupa which we are all aware of and that's it beyond that we have no entry beyond the sthula is the swarupa beyond the swarupa is the sukshma beyond the sukshma is the anvaya and beyond the anvaya is arthavatva these are the five layers which slowly the yogi removes like a peel of onion one by one and reaches to the core of the object as a side effect of this investigation or anvishan he gets the mastery over each level of bhuta which we all call siddhi so that is how he becomes the master of ashtada siddhi we saw it in detail in the previous sessions so in the world which is made up of three things the object the instrument and the perceiver the first task that the yogi undertakes is the dissecting of the object why because it is the most distant thing from the perceiver indriya is closer to the perceiver object is away from the perceiver you start from the 
fact the, from the uh, from the object which is away from you and then comes slowly closer for the analysis so when the bhutas are being properly done sayama with the yogi gets bhuta jaya and bhuta jaya leads to different types of siddhis those are essentially concentrated upon the manifested universe that is the world of objects so he gets all the power over the world of objects he can move anything he can create anything he can go through anything he can he can be master of the panchama bhutas that is called bhuta jaya now if the yogi doesn't succumb to the temptation of the powers that are coming to him as a logical corollary as a side effect and if he neglects them then he is able to do vairagyam about the siddhi throw them away and focus more on the instrument of perception the sayama on bhutas gives the bhuta jaya and the siddhis thereof similarly sayamas on indriya gives indriya jaya and the siddhis thereof indriyas also as we see the gross indriyas are known to us like eyes the skin the tactile sensation but as we see the indriyas are only the outer manifestation the eyeball has no meaning by itself but behind the eyeball behind the indriyas are again the cascading layers of perception instruments of perception in this way the sthula swarupa sukshma anvaya and arthavatva is there in bhutas the same way in case of indriyas we have five different level layers where we call it as grahana then comes swarupa then comes asmita and again anvaya and arthavatva as we can see in both in case of indriyas and in in case of bhutas as we keep on going backward they become almost one at the anvaya level which is nothing else but the gunas they are almost same so indriyas are also like bhutas that is why we call them as a jada jada means the one which is devoid of consciousness consciousness works through them but they are not consciousness for sure so after doing this sayama on the bhutas after doing this sayama on the indriyas the next stage is to do sayama on the grahitru or the perceiver the most difficult task the final frontier is to do sayama on the one who is doing this sayama sounds very absurd sounds difficult sounds very difficult to digest how can you do concentration on the concentrator but mind well these extraordinary abilities the yogi gets simply when he reaches that stage sounds absurd for a first standard student to think of phd but only when the one who becomes post graduate he knows how to enter into the phd program in the similar manner the doors of higher realization are open for those who have reached the outskirts of the higher levels because of indriya jaya the yogi gets what is known as manojavitvam vikarana bhavam and pradhana jaya because of bhuta jaya he has got all the ashtada siddhis because of indriya jaya instrument of perception victory he has got what is called as vikarana bhav and manojavitvam now the yogi does not require an instrument to be present for its application you require an eye to see and i can only see with a limitation that is a sthula indriya now because the yogi has indriya jaya he is able to see anything anywhere without putting the instrument there so this is the siddhi that he gets because of indriya jaya after this then the yogi moves to, uh, turns towards the ultimate 
goal and the last destination doing sanyama on himself as a grahitru the one who is perceiving the concentration of the sanyama on the perceiver and that is the reason why the 49th sutra elaborately tells us in a terse form sattva purusha annata khyatit matrasya sarva bhav adhishtha trutva sarva jnatrutva when the bhuta jaya is there when indriya jaya is there yogi is omnipotent but by doing this sanyama on the grahitru or the perceiver or himself he becomes master of omniscient and omnipotency so he becomes omniscient and omnipotent and this happens by doing sanyama on separation of sattva and purusha let's try to understand with each focus on indriya jaya or bhuta jaya or the sayam of any kind yogi is purifying himself the raja and tama is thrown away long back the old sanskaras are thrown away long back the prarabdhas are getting burnt out long back and what is remaining in him is shuddha sattva guna the very fact that he is able to perceive the siddhis itself means he has knowledge of everything since he has a knowledge of everything that means he is still having the role of knowledge mongerer and that itself means he is basking in sattva guna that means he is still in gunas mind well we are all in gunas and the only difference between yogi and us is we are dominated by the tama and rajas with a small speck of sattva while the yogi as he starts transcending the different levels of consciousness he is reducing his raja and tama to the minuscule level and increasing its sattva to enormous level after doing the bhuta jaya and indriya jaya the yogi now is ready to bask in the full glory of highest of the sattva guna he is a sattva guna bharita and that is why he being sattva guna bharita he is able to be omniscient and omnipotent but now his sattva guna enables him to see himself as a person endowed with guna and he is different than that guna it's a very 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 difficult and impossible task appears to be although with guru krupa it becomes easy what is the meaning of sattva guna bharitata and separation or purusha khyati or viveka khyati as it is called as knowing everything under the universe is one thing and knowing that the universe is not me is another thing i hope i'm making it clear the fact that the universe has enormous things inside it those which are yet to happen those which have happened those that are happening and its enormity cannot be even imagined by our brain even now with the best of instrument we are still grappling with the galaxy we still don't know when the time started we still don't know what is the extent of the universe all that is known to the yogi and yet that is nothing because it is still the knowledge within the prakruti now the question is this knowledge of the entire universe this mastery of the entire universe is not me it is a very difficult last frontier to pass through because to have the omniscience and omnipotency itself means you are in trigunas you cannot be out of the prakruti and say that i know the prakruti a moment you say i know the prakruti i know the maya you are in maya now it it is easier to relate with the kenopanishada 
Nunam tom vetha dharam api. If you say, no na vedeti vedacha. If you know, I know, you don't know. If you say, I don't know, you know. What does it mean? It means moment you say, I know, knowing itself presupposes your knowledge. Knowledge presupposes sattva. Sattva presupposes you are in guna. Guna presupposes you are in prakriti. Now the yogi is at the final frontier where he is about to leave the guna. And which is the last guna to leave? Sattva guna. Because of his vairagya, raja and tama has been already buried long back. The sattva is still not leaving him. Why? Because he's getting lots of knowledge. He's indriya jaya, bhuta jaya, omnishayant, omnipotent, sarva, dhishtutruva, sarva dnyatrutva. He's still in sattva guna. In order to get out of the sattva guna, which is a very, very difficult part, Imagine a situation where you say, I know. And imagine a situation where you don't say anything. Because saying anything would mean I know. From saying to non-saying. From being to non-being. From yes to not to know, but yes and no beyond. This is not an easy affair. In any case, yoga is an arduous task. Nishita Churasya Dhara. It's not easy. Prapya Varan Nibhodat. Go find out somebody who knows it. He will tell you. That's where the Guru Tattva. That is why Gurus are considered higher than the Devas. Guru Govind do khade kako lagu pai. Balihari Guru apne Govind diyo dekhai. Guru, the only institution that can take care of this last bastion is Guru. But the preparation for that is effulgence, presence of Sattva Guna in highest ascendancy. That is precisely what the Gayatri Mantra is. Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi. O oh Lord. Bhargo, light, satuguna, dhimahi, in my buddhi, give me the absolute pristine brightness of satuguna. When he is having this satuguna, there comes a time when he realizes in satuguna that the satuguna and the purusha are different. Being in guna and gunatita is different. Mind well, he is still not gunatita. He is still not transcended sattva guna. But being in the highest of the sattva guna, he realizes that purusha is different than the sattva guna. That is called separation of prakruti from purusha. It is one step before or closer to the kaivalya. When he jumps from sattva guna into purusha, the prakruti is no more existing for him. It is kaivalyam. But before jumping to the other side of the river, he is standing on this side of the river, watching the river and watching the thing beyond. That is precisely what is called Viveka Khyati. That is called as highest of the knowledge. Then what happens after that? After that, there is no even knowledge. Because for knowledge, it presupposes one who has the knowledge. The one who has the knowledge, one has gone. Knowledge is also gone. This is the stage which is then when he's standing on this bank, he gets sarva bhava dhishtatrutvam sarvadnyatrutvam. He becomes omniscient and omnipotent. So what has happened? Grahitru is gone. Grahya is gone. Grahana is still existing. 
initially while object concentrating on the objects the yogi becomes one with the object becoming one with the object means grahya grahitru becoming one even they become one grahana remains perception remains that is why when grahana is existing sattva is present when yogi is able to separate the grahana or the 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 the, the perceiver from the purusha the grahana ends the process of knowledge ends that itself means grahana is gone grahi is gone grahitru is gone triputi is gone that is the meaning of sarva bhava dhishtatrutvam sarva jnatrutvam all bhut bhavishya vartman padarth and knowledge of their gunas dharmas they come instantaneously and direct to the yogi who is standing on this brink of purusha khyati after this what happens the process of grahana ends there is no need for you to know anything the knowledge itself is sitting on the head you are the knowledge so there is no question of knowing anything anything everything is within you as a knowledge and when everything anything is within you that means you are one because grahana is gone the differentiation in the universe is seen a tree is seen as a tree by the yogi as well as river as river but the knowledge of tree river bird everything instantaneously arises in means not arise it remains it is there it is embedded in him because he is a jnana maya this is that chit part of satchit ananda chidananda roopo shivoham shivoham this is chidananda roopa chit ananda because you are chit because you know everything because you are the everything is you because knowledge is you shoka is gone so you are in ananda and you are existing sat so sat chit ananda this is how the kaivalya concept of sankhya is comes closer to the sat chit ananda concept of brahman now once he stage reaches this stage that is why if we see yogeshwara krishna in bhagavad gita he told arjuna arjuna bahunaame vetitani janmani tava cha arjuna tani aham ved sarvani natvam vetta paranta arjuna you don't know i know all the birds all this war it happened it had happened in the past i know what is going to happen in the future because i have kalam under me sarvadnatrutvam and in since in this stage there is no shoka it is called ashoka or vishoka avastha vishoka siddhi yogi has no sorrow of any kind because he is now only and only basking in sattva guna so if this is what happens then what is the situation of yogi the yogi has no klesha left we have seen pancha kleshas again it puts us back into the first adhyaya avidya asmita rag dvesh abhinivesh these are iti pancha klesha all these pancha klesha pancha klesha is the reason of our existence these five are gone now look at the situation of yogi he is not dead as yet because of prarabdha yet he is a klesha rahita then what happens if he has no klesha that means klesha leads to karma karma leads to vipaka vipaka leads to vasana nothing of this is existing yet his prarabdha is there then what prarabdha can do to him nothing 
so even if he is suffering even if he is enjoying even if he is eating he is not into it because that is part of the prarabdha and that is why it is described in shastra as when the potter's will when the potter gives the speed to the will after some time he stops giving the speed and yet the will keeps moving there is no intention of moving the will but because it has got the speed it keeps moving for some time similarly the yogi continues to live till the prarabdha although nothing is produced from the prarabdha when the yogi now has no klesh no karma that means dagdha bija avastha he goes beyond trividha tap now what happens he has simultaneously awareness of powers that he has that this entire prakruti i can i have omniscient i am omnipotent etc this is the last part of the vairagya because yogi is master of the universe being master of the universe awareness that i am master of the universe awareness that i have the power over the universe is the last bastion to throw away that is called para vairagya tukaram mara said to vithala vithala you may think you will make me god please don't think so this mukti this god is thrown by me that is why at the stage of even the highest level there is a possibility of becoming yoga bhrasht because although the achievements are there even the highest of the achievement or the siddhi or the whatever he gets is supposed to discard because he is yet to reach that final though it is in within the sight it is he is yet to reach kaivalya so in the height of shuddha sattva guna if the yogi succeeds in discarding his new status as omniscient and omnipotent then only he is able to move towards kaivalya otherwise there is a danger what is the danger the 51st sutra tells us the danger स्थानीन उपनिमंत्रणे संगस्मय अकरणम पुनर अनिष्ट प्रसंगात स्थानिन हु आर दिस स्थानिन इन पुराणास वी रीड द स्टोरीज दैट वंस मॉन्क और वन मुनि वाज सिटिंग इन मेडिटेशन एंड इंद्रा गॉट फ्राइटेंड एंड देन इंद्रा वेंट एंड ट्राइड टू डिस्टर्ब हिम दिस इज पुराना बट वी थॉट इट इज अ स्टोरी sir it is not a story although there is arthavad in purana it has kernels of truth what happens is the devas which are inferior to this yogi the level at which they are enjoying the fruits of their tapasya they try to entice this yogi by calling him we have already seen that the yogi is in touch with the devas as well as siddhas they entice him that is called upanimantrana sthanin means those indras and other devatas they can do invite the yogi and then he may get sangasmaya addicted and flattered the devas will come and say oh yogi you are so great see that small undercurrent of vritti can still be there and it can make him feel flattered पुनरनिष्ट प्रसंग फ्रॉम देअर योग भ्रष्टताश्यू विच इज द योगी हू गेट्स टेम्पटेड देर आर फोर लेवल्स ऑफ योगीज वी हेव ऑलरेडी सी इन दोस्ट different types of samadhis and all that sampradna four levels and a sampradna etc prathama kalpika is the first stage in this stage 
these are the ones with savichara and savitarka samadhi people this yogi occasionally gets a glimpse of purusha but occasional touch and go they are called prathama kalpika they are not invited by god because he is yet to reach to their level so they don't invite him so there is no issue with them then comes what is called as madhu bhumika yogi what is madhu mati bhumika we saw that one who has done indriya jaya he gets mano javitvam vikarana bhav and pradhana jaya he is the one who is likely to be a target for the devas the one who has conquered the indriyas he is immediately tempted by the devas and invited by the devas to come into their abode and enjoy the deva loka at that level if the yogi gets tempted and falters into falling in that temptation and goes into deva loka and starts enjoying then there is a fall for the yogi the one who is beyond that in pragna jyoti level which is bhutendra bhut and indriya both jaya bhutendra jaya he doesn't get tempted at all and atikranta bhavaniya he definitely doesn't because he is at the last stage because he has got all the sakshatkar including the devaloka he knows it is useless so it is only this madhu bhumika person and madhu bhumika means the one who has done indriya jaya he has to be very careful as told by patanjali maharaj because these invitations what kind of invitations are they ramya vihar we cannot imagine what a ramya vihar in devaloka is because our highest thing is maybe a space shuttle something some vague idea we have ramya vihar is a constant feeling of bliss in everything that you see around sometimes early in the morning we are having a good sleep we come out and we see the nature and we say aha ah, ah. that is a small glimpse of third rate and small glimpse of what is called as ramyata ramya vihar bhog jara mrutyu badhak rasayana prashana that means you will never grow old till the prakruti laya till the pralaya you will stay kalpadruma vruksha darshana you just go to that vruksha you wish it comes true kalpadruma vruksha punya mandakini the stream that flows in that particular level where you have achamanam and snanam in the purest of the pure water siddha maharshi gana vartala because it is all knowledge and knowledge sattva guna devas are sattva guna the yogi is also sattva guna sattva guna prompts you to get knowledge that is why the one who has got little ascendancy of sattva guna he starts studying upanishads he understands upanishads he feels like reading more that is small glimpse of sattva guna in us with purna shuddha sattva guna you feel like discussing talking and that itself gives you a little bit of high or the bhog pravrutti it is called as siddha maharshi gana vartalap of course there are divya chakshu shrotra etc all these temptations come to this madhu bhumika yogi who with his conscious efforts is able to deal with it then he moves up upwards so all those vishwamitra menaka apsara all those stories do have a meaning from this angle and mind well this is not a temptation of a sthula sthula vishwa i will give you kingdom etc because that is going to be 100 years no this is much higher level the kathopanishad is replete with those kind of analogies so this is called stages of the yogi moving forward starting from bhuta jaya indriya jaya and then grahana vijaya which is the separation between guna and purusha called viveka khyati there is another way of reaching the viveka khyati two things we must understand viveka khyati and viveka jnana these are two different things viveka khyati means knowing satva guna or myself 
सेपरेट और प्रकृति सेपरेट दैन पुरुष एंड विवेक ज्ञानम मीन्स नॉलेज ऑफ एंटायर प्रकृति वन इज अ नॉलेज ऑफ एंटायर प्रकृति एंटायर क्रिएशन इज ऑन वन हैंड एंड नोइंग प्रकृति एंड पुरुष आर डिफरेंट इज ऑन द अदर हैंड knowledge about the universe everything included in that including omniscience omnipotence viveka jnana knowing that all this creation is separate than purusha viveka khyati now viveka jnana we saw bhuta jaya gives siddhis all this is as we go higher and higher larger and larger quantum of knowledge ultimately reaching to the level where you have omniscience and omnipotence that finishes the entire prakriti's knowledge and power both there is one more way for the yogi to achieve this viveka jnanam and that is called kshana tat krama yoho sanyamat viveka jnanam this is one last sanyama possible only for a highly evolved yogi one who has already conquered indriyas and bhutas for him there is one choice to get viveka jnanam omniscience and omnipotency and what is that kshana tat krama yoho so this is the last sanyama that yogi is attempting to make the last of the siddhis what is this sanyama the sanyama or the dhyana dharana samadhi is done on time now just imagine the concept of concentrating or meditating on time we cannot even think of it <clears throat> because we don't know what time is what is time and something that i cannot even imagine how can i concentrate upon again because yogi has reached the highest of the levels at that point of time because of his bhuta jaya indriya jaya he has now developed a potency to see the time not to transcend the time but to see the time and how how does he see the time there is a difference between our perception of kal and yogi's perception of kal remember everything which is matter in this world is made up of smallest particle called paramanu according to sankhya shastra so prakruti guna then after guna the panch mahabhutas then mind everything is made up of parmanu all a jada is made up of parmanu mind included in it now this parmanu undergoes transformation called tatvantara to become something else the tanmatras become the panch mahabhutas what is, what does hap, what happens parmanu of tanmatra undergoes a transformation becomes panch mahabhuta parmanu so panch mahabhuta is of parmanu tanmatra is of parmanu tanmatra comes from the trigunas gunas are parmanu parmanu means param anu smallest possible particle of matter so for the matter it is easier to understand what about time the way matter is made up of smallest particle called parmanu the time or the kal is made up of the smallest particle called kshana kshanam now this kshanam is the smallest distinguishable part of time now there are certain very important implications of time in yogic scale at any point of time there is only one kshanam that is available to us which is called vartaman vartaman means the time comes as one particle after that the particle is gone the new particle comes that means there are particles yet to come that is kshanam yet to come kshanam that have already come and gone so what is available to us is only the present kshanam unfortunately we are all endowed with sthula buddhi dull witted we are so in sthula buddhi this krama of kshanam 
appears to be continuous appears not it is not appears to be continuous so we call it a day night samvatsara mas varsha etc so samvatsara mas varsha is a mental configuration projected by us which is artificial in nature it doesn't exist the day doesn't exist the night doesn't exist the year doesn't exist the iron doesn't exist the yuga doesn't exist what exists for yogi is kshana sarvam eva vartamanam api so that means our idea of kala is a shabda jnana anupati it is kalpanik in nature because we have sthula buddhi because yogi has the sukshma buddhi he is able to see the time and see means in the mind perceive the time as a kshanam and then he knows two kshanams cannot be at the same point two kshanam cannot be bunched together that means one kshanam comes it has to go and then gets replaced by another kshanam so there is tat krama there is a krama but this krama is not like there is a kshana waiting and there is a kshana moving out what happens is one kshana disappears another one appears disappears appears that is how kshanam or the time is coming now the yogi starts doing sayama or the dharana dhyana samadhi on this kshanam the most the difficult task is to do sayama on kshanam yogi does that and what is the result of that sayama he is able to transcend the kshanam transcend the kal that means yogi now goes beyond time so far he learned the act of going beyond the space the matter bhuta jaya indriya jaya is conquering the space because there is some something somewhere an object is somewhere indriya is somewhere so he was conquering what is somewhere now he has conquered some time so space and the time both are conquered by him and when space and time is conquered where is prakriti because prakriti cannot exist if there is no space and no time the very evolution sarga the very creation presupposes two things and what are those two things space and time if there is no space there is no time there is no universe space which again gives rise to all these matters etc because space is akasha pancha mahabhuta and since all pancha mahabhutas are conquered by the yogi space is already conquered the difficult task is to conquer the time and now he has gone to conquer the time by analyzing the time as the kshanam which appears and disappears so there is a kshanam coming up only for that kshanam the kshanam exists and then the kshanam is no more if that kram of kshanam of appearance and disappearance once it is focused and concentrated and dissected by the yogi at that point of time with his sukshma buddhi and of course that is a pragnya at that point of time the yogi goes beyond the time and gets of course the viveka jnanam so everything in this world is known to him including the time space time both are in his hands there is nothing left in this prakruti to know for him still there is something remaining what is remaining the fact that he has conquered the kshanam is known to him try to understand kshanam doing the sayam on kshanam he has transcended the time but he knows he has transcended the time that means still the grahanam is there still sattva guna is there still the grahanam is there it is very very thin thing now but it is still existing just beyond that is kaivalya 
Now comes the question, how the yogi who has understood the essence of everything, when he stays in this world, how he again knows the difference? If they are all same, for the yogi, everything as an essence appears to be same. Then how does he know that this is cow, this is horse? Why it does it become impossible for him to live? Because you cannot live in this world if you don't know that you're not supposed to get stuck to the pole. And for the yogi, pole is what? Matter. Then cow is what? Matter. It's all Pancha Mahabhuta and Kancha. He knows everything. Then why doesn't he see them in that? Simultaneously, he knows everything is one. And yet he is aware that everything is different. Is it not a controversy? Sarvatram ekatva anupashyati. All right. But while talking to his friends or his shishas, Gurudeva never said that, oh, who are you? No, he said, oh, Mr. Pradeep, come here. Oh, Narayan, Jairamji, come here. How is it possible that he knows Jairamji's consciousness and yet he is calling consciousness at Jairamji? This ability is what Jati Lakshana Deshaihi Anyata Anavacheda Tulla Yoho Tattaha Pratipatti. The differentiation in the things in spite of knowing unity is a ability that is developed by the yogi at that level. Now, our problem, we feel that how by knowing everything as one, he knows that everything is different. But the bigger problem than that is when everything appears smaller and smaller and sukshma and sukshma, they appear almost same or similar. For example, we don't see gunas. We don't perceive gunas. We are not at all connected. We just know by theory that there are three gunas. Where are they? We don't know. How are they? We don't know. We know their effect, but we don't know the cause, the gunas. Yogi is able to know them. If he is able to know them, they are at a subtler or a smaller level. At a smaller level, things appear similar and same or identical. Yet they are different. It is easier to say that iron and uh, gold are different, easier to understand. Now go into the details of iron and, and gold and go inside. Both of them are having electron protons. Now how do you know that this is electron of gold and electron of iron? If two electrons are given to us and asked us to distinguish which is the electron of iron and which is the proton of we can't. They look so similar. And mind well, this is not even the fifth level. This is second level of sukshma, of bhuta. As we go further, subatomic particles, how will we distinguish? Because then they will become so same, so similar. Are the scientists able to distinguish, distinguish between two atoms? Atom of iron, yes. Atom of uranium, because they use it in nuclear bombs. But inside the atom, if you go, then how will you distinguish? And that is still not a subtler level, second, sukshma level. Still the anvaya and all that is still. At those higher levels, differentiation becomes very difficult. Yet, yogi is able to distinguish them because of his highest level of rutambara pradnya. So that is why Jati Lakshana Desha hi Anyata Anava Chedat Tulya Yoho Tat Pratipatti. If red color cow and red color uh, horse is given to us, then we know that the, both are four legged animals, both are at the same level. That means their Desha is similar, uh, Lakshana is similar, their Jati is different. One is horse, one is cow. Now, if two cows are there, and one cow has some branding done of a swastika on her skin, then here the jati is similar, lakshana is different because there is a swastika mark on one cow. So jati lakshana deshaihi, if two amlas, two gooseberries are given to us, they are same size berries, 
we don't know what is the difference then we know the difference because this berry is from this tree and this berry is from this tree desh the difference so jati lakshan is same desh is different so our differentiation is jati lakshan desh but at a subtler level these are so similar yet the yogi is able to decipher them as separate because of his knowledge at that level after doing this final what we call as sayama on the kshanam viveka janya jnana viveka khyati then the yogi comes to the final stage where tarakam sarva vishayam sarvatha vishaya kramam cha iti viveka jnanam his knowledge now reaches the boundary the last boundary after that there is no his there is only knowledge his knowledge we are still talking of his knowledge that is called viveka jnana what is the level of his knowledge it is tarakam why tarakam because with this knowledge now he can transform himself into purusha he is able to become mukta he is not yet mukta but he can become mukta so this knowledge which is the highest now after that he is going to leave the knowledge itself why because he will become jnana maya he won't be knowledgeable of anything he would be knowledge so that is called tarakam sarva vishayakam all padartha become his vishaya nothing escapes his knowledge sarvatha vishayam sarvatha means sarva vishayam relates to the space sarvatha vishayam relates to the time sarvatha vishayam means past present future whatever is within the time he knows everything because he has gone beyond the time akramascha akramascha means we come to know only when the tree bears a fruit we come to know that there is a fruit no he comes to know well before the fruit has matured right at the root level he knows what fruit will come that means there is no krama required for his knowledge akramascha eko kshan uparudha sarvo sarvatha grunhati he knows everything everywhere of all the times of everything now he has reached a final stage where he knows he knows everything at that point of time he realizes that whatever he knows is tuch he knows everything but he needs to discard knowing everything because knowing is not the business of his at is the point when the prakruti completely subservient to him is discarded by him when he discards the prakruti he gets into purusha satva purusho ho shuddhi samme kaivalyam how is it that at the last stage full of satva guna knowing everything in the prakruti having all the control of prakruti everything how is it that then he leaves the prakruti and then enters the purusha the final frontier where the ultimate aim of the yoga shastra is achieved kaivalyam is reached how does he do that how what happens precisely what is that atma darshanam gurudev himself has given a very very occult hint intense heat of white meditation intense white heat of meditation these are the words of guru deva what is this white heat of meditation what is the point where you know that you are meditating and then comes a point where nobody knows what is happening because you are gone you in inverted comma is gone i is gone meditation is gone meditator is gone if everything is gone what remains what happens how does that last moment happen is the subject of discussion for us in the next session where this vibhuti pada will end and the kaivalya pada will start hari o om purnamada purnam idam purnat purnam udachyate purnasya purnamadaya 
ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓ